Welcome back to another edition of The Check-In. My name is Jared, and on this episode, I'm excited to share with you some behind-the-scenes footage that was recently taken at a Bitcoin meetup in Columbus, Ohio. It features our Chief Revenue Officer, CJ Burnett, where he's talking about what Compass is, what is the work and the services that we are doing for our clients, where Compass has kind of been, where we are today, and where we're really excited to go in the future. And before I share the footage of CJ, I want to shout out the Columbus Bitcoin Meetup Ohio team. I want to shout out Sonoda for sponsoring that event. And I want to shout out Loge Media for sending us over this footage and being so willing to, you know, share this with the community. So here's CJ talking about Compass. Well, appreciate you guys all coming and obviously. <laughs> First off, I want to thank the Sonoda team. Obviously, built a great relationship with them, uh, given our interaction in the mining ecosystem, just the tools that you guys are building to make it more accessible for miners, uh, obviously also in other groups. But to access power, uh, rack space is obviously pretty key, right? As, as we kind of, obviously, from the Compass perspective, we seek to decentralize access to hash rate and make it accessible for everyone. So. Maybe, maybe I can start there with just, you know, what is Compass, you know, where we found it, how long we've been around. So, so Compass was founded um, in the aftermath of the last Bitcoin halving, so back in, in late 2020. Um, very, you know, similar environment really to what we have today. Um, like low hash price, you know, wasn't really that economically interesting to mine Bitcoin, right? Um, but I think one of the things that we've learned over the course of the years is there's a lot of reasons to mine Bitcoin that aren't pure fiat profit, right? Like I think there's a lot of interest in mining and what it does to differentiate, you know, the proof of work, differentiate it from other crypto assets, other, um, you know, other digital assets and, and what mining is in this, this relationship to the physical world that some of these other digital assets don't have. Um, so as mentioned, Compass founded late 2020, really with a mission of making it accessible for anybody to mine Bitcoin. So really, you know, if you've tried to mine Bitcoin, it, it, you've probably noticed that it's very, you know, typical uh, mining ASIC, right, is really loud. It generates a lot of heat. It, it, it's not something you're going to have typically in your house, right, if you want to spare your marriage. So that, that was kind of like the vision that Compass was founded on, like, hey, this is really inaccessible. As, as ASICs begin to become more and more prevalent, you have to have purpose-built infrastructure to mine Bitcoin. And so how do, how do we, you know, Bitcoin was founded on this very like, uh, call it guerrilla style, you know, you were basically mining on your laptop or in your in your homes, like, and in, in that has basically been lost over time as these ASICs have become more and more popular because you, you have to have that purpose-built infrastructure to mine. Uh, and so, so anyway, that basically Compass was founded on this ability. How, how do we make that rack space accessible to small and light institutions that maybe they don't have the the capital to go buy their own infrastructure or, or set up their own mining facility and so that's where we basically kind of think of it as is maybe a we work kind of a situation right where they go to compass will go to these uh commercial data centers and say hey we we can bring to you call it five megawatts or 10 megawatts of customers you'll never have to interact with the end customer we recognize, you know, interacting with thousands of customers is, is hard and you probably don't want to do it. So we'll handle all of that and we, we will bring those customers and we'll fill your rack space and, and consume that power. And you get obviously the, the benefit of the additional power consumption and, and the markup you can charge on that. Um, and so we found a lot of success, right? Obviously, late 2020 was kind of in the aftermath of, of you know, all of the, the COVID stimulus checks and all of that stuff. And so people were, were starting to think pretty, like, actively again about what is money, right? Like, it, it, what is, is it real anymore? Like, can I look for, how do I get access to hard money? So obviously gold, you know, is another example of that. But um, so anyway, we kind of hit the sweet spot, I guess, of, uh, product product market fit, but also like this this wave of of, of new wave of adoption or of, of interest in Bitcoin in Bitcoin mining. Um, certainly, have hit had our bumps along the years. I think we've learned a lot. Uh, really, the focus at the beginning was aggregating kind of these third party data centers with with uh, you know retail and light institution customers. I think over time we've realized, hey, the the, the control over the infrastructure is is super important, right? One of the unfortunate things I think about our industry is sometimes, in the past certainly, I think it's less so today, but 
it has attracted a lot of maybe profit seekers, people that don't always have other people's best interests at heart. And so that, for better or for worse, Compass has gotten to stand in the middle of that and kind of vet out, hey, who are, who are the good actors, who are the bad actors, and really helping protect those and retail customers of, from those bad actors and offering them a good experience. So that's where we're headed today, right, is, is basically owning and operating our own facilities. Obviously, Sonoda is a key part of that and, and how we get more, more access to rack space and, and do that at a cost-compelling way to offer better and better access to, to light institutions, retail customers. I think one of the key, uh, I think you've seen this over the course of the last 10 years, but one of the, the cool developments, I was, I was talking with Rob earlier about it, is some of these uh, more and more uh, cool projects on like, called like Bidax and some of the, I think Canon has one of like a Nano, things like that. Uh, Brains put one out maybe six months ago. Um, really cool. It kind of builds into that ethos of what Compass was founded on, of, of really putting back mining into the hands of just people don't want to do it at home, right? So like maybe people that aren't the most economically sensitive, right? They don't care if they mine Bitcoin at 40,000 a Bitcoin, right? Or mine it profitably. What they want to do is they want to accumulate stats. They want to build in an ecosystem. And so that's obviously really exciting. Something we're thinking a lot about at Compass is how do we engage in that? Um, so more to come on that, but but definitely something we're thinking a lot about and excited about all the trends that are, that are on that side of things as well. Um, but uh, you know uh, the other key focus, as I mentioned, is for Compass is on infrastructure. Um, really, the you know working with third parties really allowed us to scale scale quickly. I think I would say at this point we're the largest mining as a services provider, and certainly in North America. And one of the things that that scale has allowed us to see is just the the downsides of working with third parties. Right, we just don't have the level of of control or accountability to the end client and the, the ability to deliver a great experience, right? Because if you're mining Bitcoin, especially on kind of the retail level, your focus is on uptime, right? So you don't want to hear about your your machine that needs a new hash board, or you don't want to, you know, you don't want to hear about uh, your unit getting relocated because a facility contract is done, or 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 some like counterparty that wasn't reputable and didn't manage their power contract accordingly. So, so that's really been a focus for us is standing up our own infrastructure and, and making sure we can uh, provide that high level of, of customer support and uptime that they're that they're needing. Um, so that's kind of really the high level overview of Compass. It's it's been really fun. Um, you know, right over the last couple of years, really just focused on delivering for our customers and being excited about what the next few years looks like. Obviously, uh, this year being an election year, it's it's exciting to see really starting to build that wave of excitement around maybe this next, uh, call it class of Bitcoiners that are going to be minted here in the next bull market, right? Like, it, it, I think we're just starting to get there, right, in, in the political environment of like, people are... People that have not ever had to hear the word Bitcoin or haven't had to think about it are now having, you know, the, the leading political candidates like talk about it and talk about policy and stuff. So that's obviously really exciting. I hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes footage of CJ talking to the Bitcoin meetup in Columbus, Ohio. And this was about an eight minute clip. If you're looking to see the full 24 minute clip that includes a great question and answer session around what Compass is doing go ahead and check out the episode show notes. I'm going to leave the link there whether you're listening to it on a podcast platform or YouTube. Go ahead and subscribe, and then you can check out that link. If you enjoyed this content, please follow us on X, LinkedIn, and YouTube where we're putting up Bitcoin mining-related content weekly, daily, all the time. Go ahead and check us out there. Thank you for watching this week's The Check-In, and I'll see you guys next week.